Welcome to our Eden, India's first net zero residences. With projects like these coming up across the country, Mahindra is creating sustainable living through future ready infrastructure. My name is Vera Loza. I am the Chief Marketing Officer of Mahindra Life Spaces and I am your host for the day. The concept of net zero homes is to enable sustainable living towards a carbon neutral future. But what is net zero living about? Why do it? Is it complex? Is it difficult? To answer all of these questions, let's meet an expert. Let's meet the solar man of India himself, Professor Chetan Solanki, the founder of the Energy Swaraj Foundation, a man who's built a 14 acre school in Madhya Pradesh, which has over a thousand students. He has traveled to over 30 countries and spoken to millions of students, stoking their passion for sustainable living. In fact, he is called the Solar Ambassador of IIT Mumbai. And we're about to meet Professor Chetan just around the corner. Hi Chetan. Hi Viral. How are you? I'm good, happy. It's a pleasure speaking with you today. Uh, you've been on a crusade changing people's attitudes and behaviours towards sustainable living. Right. So tell us, what is your take on net zero living? Well, let me give you a broad perspective about uh, what sustainability is all about and what net zero is all about. Let's discuss that. So you now being a professor, I've always been thinking. Yeah. So in the very broad sense, you know, sustainability is all about making the rule for living on this planet. You know, and I, like in our house, we have rules, right? Yeah. So in a smaller space called our home, we have made rules. Shouldn't there be rules for a bigger space, the planet Earth, you know, which is our bigger house? So I created two rules for living sustainably on this planet. And these are fundamental in nature, which means you cannot violate them. So number one rule is, or let's say law, fundamental laws is that in an ecosystem of finite resources, there has to be finite consumption. Mm -hmm. And the mother nature, the planet Earth is a finite ecosystem. The size of our planet is finite, the water is finite, the soil is finite, minerals are finite. And the law number two, in an ecosystem of finite resources, there has to be distributed production because this centralized production will always result in unequal distribution, mm. inequity in the world, mm. and eventually lack of peace and violence. And therefore, producing locally is very, very important. Yeah. So these are the two boundary conditions, limiting and localizing. And that is how we can now see what net zero means. You know? The net zero means that when you can follow this bigger picture and leave the planet livable for your own children, then we are really net zero. At a larger level, yes, that, that makes a lot of sense. But for an average person, you know, how, how do they get a flavor of net zero living? What, what are, are there some examples that you can give which shows that, hey, doing this or doing this? Yeah, so, so when we say uh, net zero in everything, and I, and I being a professor of solar energy, uh, I see everything in terms of energy, you know, so when I'm wearing a clothes, it's actually I'm using energy. So when it comes to net zero, the rule number one limit it. Can we limit the amount of clothes that you're using? You know, avoid buying unnecessarily. Don't fill up your cupboards full of clothes. Please don't do that. Everything is, you know, finite. So let's limit your consumption of water and don't take bath in the bathtub and it takes a lot of water. You know, how to do the cooking with less energy and use more efficiently, how to use other appliances very efficiently and using all kind of energy and materials all if you start paying attention you will become a net zero everybody can figure out their own ways of becoming a net zero you have to just become aware that everything that you touch you use in your life has an impact on environment so let's be conscious about it and move from careless to conscious use of materials and energy that everybody can do that. So it's it's not the other extreme of saying, you know, give up the world and live like, you know, hermits. It is about just being conscious and limiting the use to what you need. Absolutely. So it's fascinating how small actions can come together to have a huge impact, right? Absolutely. So let's talk about a source of big impact. What's out there? So 
So let's talk about the sun and yes. its immense power. Yes. Yeah. So as the champion of solar energy, what can you tell us about the possibilities and, and what it can do for us? Our lives exist on this planet because of the sun. So every life, you know, animal, insects, plants, us, we exist because of sun. And we are already great user of solar energy because the yeah. food that we eat is because of solar energy. The air that we breathe yes. is because of solar energy. And uh, I have created a three-step approach mm -hmm. to switch our lives 100% on solar energy. Okay. And I call it AMG approach, you know? AMG. AMG. Okay. So A is avoid use of energy. How we can make buildings sustainable. Mm. How we can make use of daylight. You know, we have been learning how to do things. But let us start learning <laughs> how not to do things. And that's yes. a very powerful yes. act, right? Yes. If you cannot avoid it, let's minimize it. You know? okay. For example, in the night, you cannot avoid using light. You know? yeah. When it is hot, you cannot avoid using ventilation. So you need energy to cook food and all. But let us use it very, very efficiently. And these days, thankfully, there are beautiful appliances available. Mm. Efficient lights, efficient fans, efficient refrigerators. That has a potential to cut down your electricity needs by half. So let's say we have 30% at least. Yes. So I say that avoid minimize. And the last option is G. Generate only remaining 30-40%. Then in real sense you are sustainable. Okay. Otherwise putting too much of solar energy also not good idea. Because you know we will create another problem of where recycling and all kind of things. So I keep telling people let's follow, let's switch to solar energy 100%. Let's follow AMG, avoid minimize generate to make a real sustainable living. Maybe within one year, two years, five years, switch to solar energy living 100%. Uh, let's live a life which is solar powered and let's take pride in saying I'm using less light, you know? I'm using less energy. So that's, that's my way of you know, using solar energy and making the life sustainable, net zero in a real sense. And basically stop thinking about it as a very big thing. It's something that should come naturally. It is something that can be done naturally and, and in small and simple ways by Absolutely. everyone. Yeah. Solar energy is a base of our life. We have lost the trick and we have based our life on coal, oil and gas. Absolutely. Great. So it's incredible, you know, all, all that we've been talking about. It, it actually has potential for a great win-win. Brands like Mahindra Life Spaces can provide these net zero residences and homes that allow resident communities to engage with sustainable living. Absolutely, and, and uh, everybody can do that. We don't need rules, written rules and laws. And I yes. keep saying in, in a short that, you know, uh, we have to move from, move away from common science to common sense. And when is people start applying common sense about the materials and energy that we use, it will be very easy for everyone to live yes. sustainably and become net zero and let the planet livable for our future generation. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Chetan. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for your advice, the tips, and the common sense that uh, you have imparted to us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. So for all those watching, this is just the first step on our journey towards a net zero world. So stay tuned for episode two on this journey. And until then, stay green. <laughs>